Thank you very much and good morning to everybody. This probably will start with representative cases. This is a 24 year old male, um, had a panivitis, uh, retina was attached, UBM shows ciliary body edema, 360 degree choroidal effusion, and OCT showed central macular thickness, epiretinal membrane. Uh, he was treated with immunosuppression, topical, systemic and intraocular steroid, but over a period of, period of one year, the cat progresses further, it will become hazy, had a disc edema, UBM shows postpana membrane, there was grass hypotony. He underwent lensectomy, retrieval of the vitreous, and we supported with the tail buckle, internal periphery because of extensive paspana membrane, and obviously we also removed paspana membrane in this case. Early post-operative period, he had a 360 degree choroidal detachment, had executive detachment. We again added on extensive steroid therapy and at two months post-op, patient could, re could regain back 6-9-8 vision where however the intraocular pressure was 3 mm. And by however years down the line, though media was clear, there is no other episodes of varieties, uh, inflammation. Because of the membrane, his vision stabilized somewhere around 6, 6, and 12, but the intraocular pressure remained low throughout this uh, period. This is another 21-year-old female patient, had again parthenitis in both eyes, vision was counting finger, extensively posterior sinic, executive detachment, was initially treated with IV male prednisone, topical systemic steroid, and immunosuppressor, but had a recurrent episodes of inflammation leading to eventually cataract and turbidities. Underwent vitrectomy, lensectomy. During early post operative period, he has a very gross hypertony. Chorai, there was chorai infolding, scleral infolding, and particularly uh, fundus was invisible because of corneal infolding. So, so we did not have any choice, but we injected silicon oil in both the eyes. At last follow off at four years, she is maintaining 260 vision, antisemin is quiet, retina is attached, but the intraocular pressure is one eye is two, other eye is zero, in spite of having silicon oil and we could not remove silicon oil in this eye and with time now, she is developing now uh, cardiopathy. So we, are, we will have to have some problem with how to deal with because you cannot remove the oil and you keep on clearing cornea, calcium deposits, but eventually they are going to come back because oil in anti-chamber. So it will be a difficult situation to handle. So coming to vitreal surgery, role in a, in a UIT. It's a, it's a, UIT is a group of inflammatory disorders that primarily involves the uvia and adjacent tissue. And vision loss can be due to high rate of complications such as cystic macular edema, subretinal and retinal fibrosis, retinal detachment, optic atrophy, glaucoma, and cataract. Despite advances in anti inflammatory and immunomodulatory therapy, permanent structural changes can occur in few eyes that are best managed with surgery. We have basically grossly divided your indications into three groups, either optical, diagnostic and therapeutic. Diagnostic vitrectomy probably what we would like to do is to collect the vitreous sample to confirm or establish a diagnosis and to guide therapy in eyes where you are poor or incomplete response to the appropriate therapy and when you are having a clinical suspicion of intraocular neoplasm or infection. It can predict visual outcome as well based on your report provided by your laboratory. However, this yield can be suppressed generally because most of these eyes had some prior treatment given. There is a lag between collection and processing the specimen in the laboratory or sometimes damage during transport, temperature is not maintained properly and obviously most important issue is experience of microbiologists and cytopathologists. The reason being most of us cannot give a sample more than 0.2 or 0.2 cc and so microbiologists or pathologists they have special training to work with this limited sample and come out with results which is not that easy. So surgical indications could be cataract, secondary glaucoma, vitreous membrane, or opacity of the membrane hemorrhages, epiretinal membrane, chronic cystoid macular edema, and having inflammatory choroidal neovascular membrane occasionally. Chronic hypotony is and retinal detachment are again two main causes. The what vitrectomy really does, probably it reduces the antigen load and inflammatory mediators in the vitreous cavity and thereby reduces the intraocular inflammation. 
it relieves vitreo tunnel and vitreo ciliary body traction and probably with relieved traction it helps in re-establish ciliary body function and and uh, settling back the retina and settling center cyst and macular edema. Probably vitrectomy has a therapeutic effect on its own, which is independent of its role in a correcting UAT complications or clearing the ocular media. Uh, it, with a reduced intraocular inflammation, it may allow tapering or sometimes totally eliminate the systemic steroid or immunosuppressant therapy. Steroid responders or patients intolerant to immunosuppressive are again a good candidate for indications for vitrectomy. Coming to specific indications like cystoid macroedema, it is probably due to breakdown of blood retainer barrier and more commonly seen in eyes with a pass penitis, another group with a sarcoidosis. Topical steroids and non steroid antimetry drugs are a primary treatment and probably intravital triamcinolone or avastin can also be tried, but again you have need to have repeated injections in this scenario. Vitrectomy probably helps in resolving CME by reducing or stabilizing the inflammation. It, it removes ERM, thereby relieves attraction. And again, as I said, vitrectomy itself may have result in resolution of cystoid macular, probably better uh, circulation. It enhances the probably uh, uh, circulation and oxygen saturation in the vitreous cavity when vitreous is removed. It again can be combined with the intravitreal tricot on the table. However, visual outcome depends on the duration and severity and actual structural damage to the macula before surgery. Coming to the cataract, almost 100% almost patient were going to develop, have a cataract sometime or later. It's probably due to inflammatory media, yes, or because there is prolonged duration of steroid therapy. And indications for surgery could be visually significant cataract in combination with vitreotin surgery for better visualization of posterior segment and can have a lens induced uveitis. This, uh, whether IOL should be implanted in these eyes or not, that's again a debatable question. But definitely the situation where they are having a JRA or pan uveitis or granular matters uveitis, IOL should definitely be avoided. FACO is a preferred modality because it causes a less breakdown of blood aqueous barrier and hence less amount of postoperative inflammation, meticulous cortical cleanup, and in the bank implantation is of paramount importance when they are planning intraocular lens in these eyes. Combined vitrectomy with cataract surgery probably give a better final structural outcome and it again shows that it helps in reducing the recurrent episodes of inflammation in these eyes. Coming to epiretinal membrane, overall incidence is somewhere around 20 to 38 percent. More commonly seen in young adult. And, and as you see here, probably these eyes generally when you deal with this vitreous is very, very sticky. Probably because of repeated episodes of inflammation. Because of that, sometimes it is firmly adherent to the ret uh, retina and it's extremely difficult to remove. The visual improvement is, however, is seen some almost up to 70% of eyes, probably can be due to direct epiretinal membrane stripping, stabilization of inflammatory process, and probably because you are, uh, because removal of the epithelium helps to stabilize cystoid macular edema because of relief of epithelial macular traction. However, compared to idiopathic ERM, the prognosis is poorer in this eye, and there is a very high incidence of recurrence. Hypotony is, is, is a major problem we deal when we are handling this CUA these cases. Probably inflammation increases the permeability of the blood aqueous barrier and also enhances UVS clear outflow, but at the same time it decreases the aqueous production. And also sometimes because of repeated inflammation, it causes ciliary body atrophy, structural damage to the ciliary body that itself reduces the aqueous inflow. Hypotony lead to corneal decompensation. Accelerated cataract formation, you can have supracorridal effusion as you see on UBM here, um, and uh, maculopathy with disturbance of retinal pigment epithelium. UBM is very, very important when you plan the management in these eyes. Basically, it helps to evaluate entry chamber depth, positioning of the ciliary processes, ciliary body detachment or membranes, ciliary body atrophy. Particularly, when you see ciliary body atrophy, and there is no traction on the ciliary body on UBM, probably these eyes, they don't do well with vitrectomy. Probably you need to have say, silicon oil in the eye for the rest of the life. But, but if there is a traction and if there is ciliary body uh, uh, processes are intact, probably these are the good candidates for vitrectomy and invariably they do well. So again, steroids are mainstay. 
intravitreal subtenin injection they do give some some success however you need to have some eventually removal of cyclic cyclic membrane to relieve the tension this is one of the eyes basically uh, extensive ciliary body membrane was there these are the cataract so basically along with good vitrectomy it is necessary to release all synechias remove capsular remnants remove ciliary membranes if necessary sorry <coughs> sorry uh, 360 degree encircalage also can be used and eventually may need silicon oil injection provided uh, sometime while removing this ciliary body mem uh, membrane over the ciliary body area you can land up having a dialysis and laser also may be necessary this is another patient have extensive ciliary body membrane being 11 year old we decided to avoid approaching through pass plana because this membrane was going over the even peripheral retina so i was hesitant doing a bit using a regular sclerotomy so we use a limbal approach and this is what you see here extensive membrane all around 360 degree we could remove most of the cataract and complete vitrectomy directly through the limbal approach using the ac maintainer uh, it would be another be minute or so. Yeah. Another minute. Yeah, that's fine. So, this is a post-operative picture, and a two-month patient could recover six, twelve, and eight vision. And this is an encircling band effect that you see here. Media was fairly clear. So, come retinal detachments again. It can be a variable. Uh, it can be because secondary to hypotony. Can be due to exudation and can be due to regmatogenous component. Uh, generally, it has a poor functional outcome, and this is one of the patient had a vitrectomy with our lensectomy for uveitis. She was maintaining reasonably good vision and came back after three years with a bullous detachment. Retina was in pupillary area. We could not see any break. We had difficulty in examining periphery. So we took her for surgery, injected saline through the limbus to push the retina back to build up the pressure. And when we examined again, we could see that there was no break in this whole thing because of hypotony. We just injected silicon oil and last two years, patient is maintaining now 3 by 60 vision. That was only a patient had. So it's important when you before surgery it is important to have make sure eye is quiet at least for three months. Start some topical or systemic steroid two to three days prior to the vitrectomy. Um, Periocular steroids are important during the post surgery period and taper this systemic and topical steroid very very uh, slowly. Uh, I just uh, run through this just to summarize. Uh, vitrectomy is a natural accompaniment to photo uh, pharmacotherapy to clear vitreous opacities and repair structural components. Modern surgical techniques have helped to improve surgical outcome with reduction in inflammation, improved visual acuity and reduction of dose and duration of medical treatment. Ciliary body status on UBM helps to predict diagnosis and plan the surgery. Final function outcome, outcome however, depends on macrostatics. Proper patient selection and early vitrectomy will probably improve the outcome in this case. A better understanding of the